On the 25th of September, I did a repot session. I filmed it and had a rookie error. <laughs> I didn't put the mic on. So a silent movie ensued. And then I thought of making it like an old movie, black and white, and do a little bit of the Looney Tunes background. And then I thought I was doing, gonna do a voiceover on that. It just didn't work out. <laughs> I didn't like how my hands were not following what I was saying. It was so weird. So thank you very much. If you're going to watch this whole video, I really appreciate it. It's going to be an update on my mini fowl collection, but also with some cuts of, you know, the root system when I did the repot. So we'll see how it goes uh, when the editing time comes, if I can manage to do a good job. If not, this is just going to turn out to be a quick update on my mini fells that I did repot after two years in their semi-hydro setup. So there's one exception, and that is Vega Cecilia here. Let me get this situated properly. Vega Cecilia is like my little mini fell. The only one that seems to be still biding its time. I mean, it's not doing too badly considering, but I haven't seen much of anything really, really busy with the root department. And I lost a root tip here due to the leka, and I didn't keep it moist enough. So the other roots are doing all right, but also the root tips are dying back here. I do keep my microfiber around it, but I never covered that root. So we're gonna have to make a few adjustments here and spread the love, the microfiber blanket love, and see if we can activate that root back there to be able to function again properly. Now, if this one decides to spike this year, I'm not going to let it. It's, um, it did bloom for me this season because last winter I was quite radical with all my spikes. I chopped 13 or so off of all my orchids. And this one was the one where I said, oh, I need to see some blooms. So I let Vega Cecilia bloom. This round, I won't. This is where I'm going to just say, you're gonna get a rest. I had these two, this leaf grow, and it's nothing that I like to see size-wise. It's pushing out this leaf now, but it's, it's not there. It will not bloom this cycle. This is the little white fell, Phalaenopsis maxi. I have the big blousy one called Maximilian, and this is maxi. And um, when it came time to repot, I did not clean up the root system a couple of months into it being in semi-hydro, something that is actually highly recommended to do. I didn't do that, so it had loads of aerial roots coming out, a cascade of aerial roots right across here. And although I did well over two winters as they were growing to keep them safe, not to break, I was just enough already because space is gonna be an issue come this winter, and the more roots the orchid gets into the pot, the better. So I did not let Maxi bloom this year. I wanted vegetative growth to be focused on, and it has worked because this is the first new leaf of this year, and we've matched and surpassed the previous structure. And then it pushes out this leaf, which is going to be quite good in size, but I think just a little bit narrower. And I'm finding a lot that when the second leaf comes out so late in the season, that they do are narrower, but at least we've got the size. So I'm not, I'm not disappointed in different sized leaves, as long as I have a substantial leaf and not something this small. I also had um, to clean up quite a bit in the root department, two years without a cleanup. You know, that's not an issue if an orchid is set in semi-hydro, but these, this one was being transitioned. And then it's always good practice to go in after a couple of months to have a look what has died off, clean out the root system that has died off, and then potter back up. I didn't do that. 
I didn't have the confidence to do that. As long as the orchid wasn't looking too bad, I just left her and I was happy for it. And uh, this time around, I did clean up the root system, including all the kinks where the black was. I took those away because the root system wasn't bad at all. And I did pot up all the aerial roots, tidied it up and managed to get her into a bigger pot. No roots were harmed or broken. And I think we're gonna be okay with letting Maxi bloom this cycle. And I have another little root growing there, which is awesome. Mine hasn't even started spiking yet, and I'm okay with that. The longer it takes to spike, the more I can rely on the leaf here developing to a certain maturity. I'm quite used to my fowls spiking very late in the year. I have one that's already showing a spike, and I have another one, uh, my Shilleriana, only just now showing her nubbin. I'm late with when it comes to my fowls spiking. So I'm not concerned about what's going on in any of the pots. This is Phalaenopsis hot kiss. My first big lipped fowl. And it's been in semi-hydro and it really, really didn't skip a beat. It just accepted it. I didn't have any issues, not with any of the structures that have grown since in my care, as you can see. The repot was fine. I had some dead roots in there, but I also had some that had grown new in my care straight into the pot and then sort of kinked themselves around the bottom of the pot. And I was very happy to see that. And I have another root back here doing its thing, what it is supposed to do, going straight into the pot. So Hot Kiss did bloom last year, and I'm gonna let her bloom again because she's she's got her mojo, she's got her rhythm. Big Lip Fowl, we shall be seeing her again sometime early January, February, something like that. Yeah, very pleased with the progress of this one. It's not exactly a mini fowl, as you can see, it's sort of a medium-sized one, but I categorize her as mini because she hasn't got one of these massive big pots. And here's a no ID mini fowl that I called Aurora. And I bought this one because of the mottling of the leaves that were very similar to another one that I lost, cotton candy. And cotton candy was bought at the time because of the leaves. And then when I got her home, she developed a fragrance. And I'm like, this is a bonus. I've never had this before. Gorgeous little blooms. But yeah, I lost her. Same thing, semi hydro conversion for me at that point with that one didn't work. When I went out to hunt for the replacement, there wasn't one until I saw this one, which had very similar leaves and very similar looking blooms. And I'm like, okay, you're coming with me. And I was banking on getting a fragrance, but I didn't, no fragrance there. So I didn't let Aurora bloom this past cycle either because you can see that the leaf was mediocre at best. And I just didn't feel comfortable with letting her bloom. She is now producing a lot of happy sap. And I go around and wipe that off with water because I don't want these getting attacked by scale. It's a funny thing with a happy sap, although it's a good sign for the orchid as such, getting hydrated, that's all I need to know. I don't need scale to tell me how good that stuff tastes. And I'm very vigilant this time of year. Again, it seems like there is an issue. And um, with the scale in, in my climate at these this time of year, and I don't want that. I don't want another one being taken out radically before my eyes, before me getting to it. So once a week, at least, if not twice a week, I am going around all my fowls, checking for the happy sap and making sure that it is off because I don't want any issues. Very good root system considering also the other one had faded. I wasn't disappointed with this root system at all. And here I also put the aerial root into the pot. Didn't break it. That was a good thing because the more I can get into the pot with this one as well, the better. Now, decision will be when, if it spikes, do I let it bloom? I'm not sure. I'm not sure on this one yet. It's not uh, something I've decided on. I'll have to see 
how the others do, if I'm satisfied with the others. I mean, basically, you can see it's got its mojo. It hasn't worried about. I am not worried about what's going in the pot now. It can just grow and thrive. And I might just need to let it grow and thrive for one more year. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind on this one yet at all. We shall see. But at least these are really, really good now. They're looking healthy. I don't anticipate any issues. If I can manage to stay, keep them clean from any pests. And we're good to go. I have one more that I wanted to show that I did do in that video. And I'll go and get her right now. And look who's joined us. Cousin It. <laughs> Cousin It is here. Yeah, just for a real quick interlude, you decided to join us. Pretty blooms. He had to have a look-see. This is um, Ninja Yellow that I got from the Orchid Room. A gorgeous, gorgeous hybrid. I absolutely adore this orchid with the lemony blooms as they open, fading into white and then the freckles on the bottom here. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful fragrance as well. Now, this one I took out of the pot and I did what one is supposed to do, the best practice part. I cleaned up the roots that had not made it through the transport transition and some of the cracks that were in the roots themselves. There wasn't that much to clean up because this orchid is accustomed to semi-hydro self-watering setup. And um, I just took off what was probably going to be an issue in another two or three months and then put her back in the same pot, same lecker. But what I'm going to do now is cut off her spike. I know, shock horror, ouch. But uh, as she is new to my collection, I'm getting one new root starting over there. I'm going to have to be careful with the jiggling of the lecker. And there's another one coming out in the corner over there. So here I have another spike coming and another root. What I'm going to do now is take off the spike that is currently blooming because it's too much energy being exuded. And what I'm going to do with the decision of whether letting that spike bloom or not will depend on these two roots. I don't want to have this orchid exude too much energy on anything. I have to also be careful. Just one second. I also have to be careful with how much I jiggle this orchid right by that root tip. And I'm being super careful not to get to the stem. This is not the time of year to be messing around with the base of the stem of a monopodial. And I may just remove that lecker bead at this point in time to let that root go down without any obstruction. You see, I have dry top layer. I work with it, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so much. But where I can, I try to make sure that all the roots get a fair chance to get down into the lecker. And then if I have to create a hollow, so be it. And I'll protect that area with some sphagnum moss as well. Once that root is longer, I can fill up with more lecker around the top. There we go. Right, now I don't have to worry so much about jiggling and messing that root tip up. Now I'm going to take her down take the spike down to the first node, which is very difficult to see. But there's a, the last node right at the bottom for the time being until it completely dries up. And I'm going to put this into a vase and enjoy the blooms in the living room for as long as they decide to bloom. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of cinnamon onto that cut spike. Sometimes I don't, but it's not that time of year to think anything is going to callous over fast. We're still enjoying quite good temperatures, but it's not... Um, 
but that's no guarantee. Things can change very quickly from one day to the next. Very ambitious orchid, this one. Love it. So there we have it. Took off a spike, had a check on the roots, and I hope that she has the energy to push those roots into the media. And then we will see what we're gonna do, whether we're going to let her bloom again or not. Coming from the orchid room, nothing surprises me. If you haven't seen her latest video of her walkabout, with all the fowls in bloom. This time of year, absolutely amazing. I'll link it down below. By the way, yes, one more thing. Thank you. Cousin, it reminded me. One more thing. Thank you, I appreciate it. Very good. Public service announcement. I'm getting a sore throat and swallowing hurts. Usually when this happens, I lose my voice. Doesn't mean I'm sick or anything, but there's always been something. When, uh, when I get a sore throat, which doesn't happen often, but I can wake up one morning and my voice is gone. So I just want to let you know, give you a heads up. I do not have access to a community tab and I can't basically tell you that I can't speak. So just a quick heads up that if there are no videos for a couple of days, I can't speak. I've lost my voice. <laughs> I appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate Cousin It for reminding me that I needed to add that on. Thank you ever so much. I hope you're all doing well. And I wish you a wonderful day. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.